Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of cool science news today, and I want to give a heads up on the first time off I'll be taking in a decade of doing this show. Let's jump right into it at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star, with the sequence beginning at the filament eruption that ripped away southward yesterday morning. After that, there wasn't much to see, coronal holes turning through, all telemetry is calm in the flaring and solar wind, and if anything, we're eyeing the northern sunspots with the south heading out of view, and a new one born out ahead of the grouping. Eyes on that one today. Let's go with aesthetics to start. Gorgeous recurrent nova here from Hubble, with outbursts they believe having occurred 28,000 and about 4,000 years ago. Interesting, that's a 24,000 year gap, which is an exact double harmonic of the hypothesized solar recurrent nova time gap sliding with that theme into the first article of the day and i love this one because we've got a star feeding off a binary but it's not until it collides with a third source of disruption that it pulls its nova event those stellar interactions are crucial up next folks this one is like the cherry on the extended global warming timeline story beating a dead horse here once again if the timeline is extended it does not change the total warming marks today which means if we just let them call the game and have their way with the science, it took more time and more pollution to get there, which means it's not as big a factor as they think it is, and that's letting them cheat and play devil's advocate. Up next, folks, an outstanding look at aspects of the global electric circuit interaction from ICON. ICON and its sister mission called GOLD are up studying the ionosphere and its interaction with space weather above and the lower atmosphere below. Today, they are focused on the contribution of that lower atmosphere to the ionospheric disturbances and about the only place they need improvement is they do fail to recognize that those ground up plasma motions can be driven by the sun as well, rapidly. We just saw that in our climate mini series. And when the magnetic field takes impact from the sun and the circuit starts going, the downward flow pushing out in high pressure switches to inward and upward release with the storms, lightning, and even happens in the fall of night. Again, they're fully recognizing this in the NASA study, but fail to include how the lower atmosphere behavior is also driven by the sun, especially those upward plasma motions, and then the magnetic field and geoelectrics taking over, confining the plasma to the field lines and helping to redistribute that energy to other latitudes. The extreme version of this, by the way, in a super flare solar micronova is pretty scary, to be honest. And speaking of scary, Climate scientists likely don't know how close they came to taking the coming hammer strike back in 2019. The CUSP mission was set to study where the solar wind directly accesses the atmosphere, but the launch window wasn't right. They're trying again now. Hold on to your hats, climate scientists. Your world's about to get turned upside down when they measure that plasma coupling. Folks, as I mentioned at the end of last week, my family sacrifices in total to let this show come out daily and at this absurd time of the morning. I will be spending the weekend in mea culpa mode. We will try to have a special video released during that time frame, but unless there's major solar activity, in terms of the daily show, after Friday, I'll see you Monday morning. We greatly appreciate your support. When the weekend comes, the store closes for the holidays. Last chance to get our textbook, disaster book, kids books, and more. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 30 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone